Hi and welcome to Physics High and today what I want to do is two things. Number one, I want to demonstrate superposition which is simply the adding of waves and in this case I'm going to be using transverse waves. But secondly, I want to use a very powerful online graphing calculator called Desmos. Now if you're not familiar with Desmos, hopefully this will give you the basics of how to use Desmos to do various graphing techniques. Now it's extremely powerful and so if you're very familiar with Desmos, some of the stuff I covered will probably be familiar with you. But if you're new, keep watching and hopefully you'll get to use this very powerful tool. Now before I go on, please remember to like, share and subscribe. And particularly if you find this very helpful, maybe buy me a coffee, I'll drop the link down below. So let's get started. So Desmos can be simply activated by going to www.desmos.com and you'll see you'll get a familiar setup like this. Now on the side here you can change some, uh, certain things such as in this case we can change what the axis looks like, what angles we're going to use and so forth. We're going to leave everything as it is. What I want to do now is I want to add an equation and an equation in this case is going to represent our first wave. Now the fact is is that waves can be described mathematically by way of a trigonometric function and the most common one that we use is the sine function. And so what I do is simply add this sine function and I call it f of x because it is a function with respect to x like so and I'm going to make this equal to sine x. And so automatically you'll see I get a blue wave. Now before I continue, if I want to change the color, I'll just use the little rose symbol here, press the blue and I can change it to red in this case. And I can also make it dotted lines and so forth. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as a red line. And you'll see it has a particular amplitude and a particular wavelength. Now, the way amplitude, of course, is the equilibrium line to the top. And of course, the wavelength is simply the distance between two successive crests, for example. But I want to be able to change this, make a more generalized version of my wave function. And I need to be able to change the amplitude and change the wavelength or frequency for starters. So first of all, I'm going to be changing the amplitude. And all I need to do to the function is add a constant at the front of the function. So I'm just going to say A. And you'll see automatically I get a slider, which now allows me to modify that amplitude. And that's obviously very useful. The next thing I want to add is I want to be able to change the wavelength. To change the wavelength, we need to put a variable in front of the x. And so in this case, I'm going to call it b just for simplicity's sake. And again, I'm going to add a slider. And now you can see if I shift b, I change the wavelength of my wave. The only thing is though, if I increase b, you'll see the wavelength decreases. So actually b is a more of a relative function to the frequency of the wave. But the problem is, is that you can't see the frequency because the wave is not moving. And so now we need to add another constant or another variable to show the aspect of moving. Now, one way I can do it is basically add another variable within the sine function where I can say, let's say minus. In this case, I'm going to do minus C, but I want the whole function to be in there. So you now I've got a sine bx minus c and if I add the c slider I now have the ability to move the actual wave from left to right using my slider for c. And that's nice but again I'm moving it. And by nature waves must be moving. So how can I make it moving continuously with respect to time? Well c is like displacement and so displacement can also be expressed as a velocity multiplied by time. So I'm going to replace my c with the two variables of v for velocity and t for time. And so now I'm going to enter vt and the system asks well do you want sliders for those and I'll say yes I want both of them there. And just to make life easy I'm just going to rearrange my letters so they're in the order that I created them like so. Now of course I had C before, I don't need it, I'm going to get rid of it. So now I have V and T. T I need it to now to be able to move continuously. So if I press the play button my T shifts from one value to the other. So my wave is actually now moving but it's moving backwards and forwards and I want it to move continuously in one direction. So how do I do that? I use the button down below and in this case I have the ability to move it in multiple directions but I'm going to choose the last one which is infinite movement in one direction. I do that and now I press play and of course it moves 
and then I can change V, which is my velocity, and I now have the ability to change the velocity of my wave. Very, very powerful. Now I have a wave that is moving either left to right with respect to time. I can change its amplitude, and I can change its frequency. And again, if I have my wave moving like so, and I change, I increase the, you can see now the frequency changes. So let's say the number of crests passing any one particular point increases. But of course, if I change the velocity, I can change that as well in terms of its velocity. All right, there's one wave. I wanna create a second wave. And in this case, I want the same controls. That is, I want to be able to change its amplitude, its wavelength and obviously its velocity. Now how do I do that? Well I simply do the same idea of the same function and so I can basically do a copy of this and call it g of x with the same letters. But the thing is is that I already have a, b, v and t allowed and so what I want to do is I want to use the capital versions now so that highlights it to the other wave. So I'm going to do that really quickly and I'm going to add those now. By adding the equation with all the appropriate letters I have everything still the same. The only thing I need to do now is change the t to time so that it's animated and now I can of course play both of them at the same time by pressing play on both the same time and of course if I change the velocity of one I can make them go in the opposite directions. What do I want to do now? I want to be able to add those waves. Now what I'm going to do is I want to be able to see all the waves, that is the two individual waves and also the summation not exactly on that x-axis. I want to put them, let's say, two below the x-axis and one above it so that you can clearly see what's going on. Now how do I do that? Well let's pause it. For my f of x I'm going to add a, a minus 5 to it and you'll see it drops a lower. I'm going to do the same for, for g of x but this time I don't want to drop as much so I'm going to do minus 2. So now what I want to do is I want to show the superposition of those two waves. Now how do I do that? Well I'm going to create another function that's going to be the sum of the other two functions. So in this case I'm going to say plus, I'm going to add an expression, I'm going to call h of x like so, I'm going to press equals, I've got to make sure we use the same f that we had before so it's not a different function. Do the same thing for the g of x but I'm going to make sure I shift that last one up and you can see now it's appeared down the bottom, it's all the way down the bottom because both of them are subtracted. So I need to add another large value to go to the top. So maybe, let's see what happens if I add 10 to it. You can see it now sits nicely above it and now what I have is here is the summation of the two. Now with waves we want both of them moving. So how about we actually allow one move to move in one direction and the other one in the same direction, in the opposite direction, you'll see it's a negative value and here it goes in the negative direction and now you see the case of the summation of the two. Let's pause it for a second and let's just return both of them to have the same amplitude and the same wavelength. So I'm going to go here to the value of one and the same thing to the other one as well. The, the speed of as one, so everything is identical. So now by making everything the same, you can see they are in phase with each other. I've actually left one thing out and that is the ability to change the phase of one with respect to the other at some particular point in time. How do I do that? Well remember, I'm shifting my wave one way or the other. So all I need to do is add a value at the side. And in this case, it's going to be in relation to the concept of a, way, a, a value in relation to an angle. So what I'm going to do is now reintroduce the C that I had before. And I'm going to make it C. And in this case, I'm going to type the letters pi and you'll see automatically pi appears and my C appears and now I can add, let's say, a phase change. So if I increase C, for example, to the value of one, you can see now they're out of phase because I am pi radians different to the others. And you can see the two are out of phase and hey presto, they are adding destructively and so we have total interference. If I make my C a value of let's say zero, now they're completely in phase 
And so as a result, we have complete constructive interference. If I have, for example, let's say some fraction of it, let's say I have half of C and I need to move the slider to 0.5, we're now pi over two, which is 90 degrees out of phase. And you can see now by having that little function in just one of them allows me to convert the phase between the two. Again, this slider I can play so that you can see it change with respect to time. Now I like showing this with just set angles. So what I'll do now with my options on the side here, I can actually choose the step function here and I can make this step function to be equal to 0.25. And what that does is when I enter that, then moving across, you'll see I only get one 1.25, 1.5 and so forth. So it makes it easy just to see what's going, whether it's 90 degrees out of phase or 45 degrees out of phase and so forth. But you can make that smooth if you want. Lastly, some examples of superposition. Now, uh, in this case, we have, of course, stationary, but that's only at a particular point in time. So if I press time for both of them, you can see they stay in the phase that you press them in. If I have one going in the opposite direction, as you can see now, we're getting constructive and destructive over a period of time. Now, the thing is, do you notice here what we set up here? It's a standing waves. And the standing wave is a situation where we have two waves that have exactly the same amplitude and exactly the same frequency. Now, because we both had them setting at a value of one, it's exactly the same. And so we have a standing wave. But note that if I change the amplitude of one and not the other, I will not get a standing wave. And in fact, you'll see that my wave is now actually moving or at least the summation of it. If I go back to one again, it actually will give you a value. Again, my standing wave will reappear. If I change the frequency of one, again, you'll see there's again movement going on. So it shows you the condition that you need for a standing wave to occur. Well, that gives us an introduction to superposition in one dimension. I hope that has helped you understand a superposition better. Also the power of Desmos. Now there are lots of things that Desmos can do that are far more complex than even what I've showed you here. Maybe those are subjects for future videos and maybe in a comment below is some suggestions of how you could use Desmos or what you'd like to me to demonstrate. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.